What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning, happy Thursday folks. It is December 15th. Today is a big day. Why? It is Championship Thursday. That is right. Tonight at 6.30, it is going down. The one seed is playing the two seed. Upper Men's Gold Division Softball Championship. I can't wait. I played against a bunch of my teammates last night. We play in different co-eds teams, a lot of us. They beat my team. Listen, my team's just for fun. We did awful in co-ed, but we're still going to make the playoffs as a five seed. It is what it is. You know, but we were all talking, hyping up today's game. We're ready. We're excited. I think I got a couple of people coming out to come watch it. I couldn't be more thrilled. I'm trying to win my third championship title here, folks. Game's at 630. I am ready for this. Now, not only is it a big day in that aspect, today's the 15th. What were the rumors flying around about December 15th from uh, Charlie Boy, Charles Hoskins? He said that supposedly something was going to go down to Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit today. Supposedly, he said there was going to be a settlement. Tick tock is what I have to say there, folks. Tick freaking tock. If it happens today, it happens today. If we get some kind of news today in regard to the lawsuit, let it be. I'm ready. You're ready. We are all ready. Let's move on past this bogus Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit. The case that's been holding us back. The case that we all know the SEC is on the wrong side of history. Let's move on. It's very clear that XRP is not a security. It couldn't be more clear that XRP is not a security. I bet 90% of you listened to my voice when you first purchased XRP that you had no idea who Ripple even was. Yet the SEC wants to meet with FTX and Sam Bacon Fried, a man who claims there was a $9 billion accountant error, a man who claims that he cannot go to prison because of depression and he's a vegan, and they want to turn their backs and do nothing for it. What I think should happen is that Gary Gensler should be uh, should be thrown up there. Maybe Gary G is on the inside of this corruption that has been going on. Maybe Gary G needs to do a little jail time. What do you think about that? Still, folks, this timing to me, the timing to me, something is off. He gets arrested right before he's supposed to go in front of Congress and testify. It's almost like uh, he's covering someone's you know what. Anyway, stuff about that. We're going to hear about Kevin O'Leary because he testified. Guess what? He's blaming Binance. He's calling Binance the biggest monopoly out there in this unregulated wild, wild west. And that they purposely took out the number two cryptocurrency exchange out there so they can have all the market share. How about a PayPal integration? getting ready to go down this is big and then the xrp pre-allocation theory talking central banks talking xrp that's pre-allocated let's go through this let's get over the live coin watch what are we seeing out there bitcoin seventeen thousand seven hundred and thirty six dollars and it's currently down 0.46 percent in 24 past 24 hours ethereum one thousand two hundred and ninety one dollars and it's currently down 2.48 percent in the past 24 hours xrp which might be on the verge of settlement or some kind of news coming out today well it's down on the 24 hour about 1.7 percent but it's turned green on the hourly 0.22 percent coming in at a mean lean 38 cents total cryptocurrency market cap 871 billion as bitcoin dominance is coming in at 39.15 percent now kevin o'leary testifies at the set in here and saying Binance in intentionally put FTX out of business. Listen up. It's going to play, I promise. It's coming. Maybe it's not coming. Let's do one of these. Have one of these. One of those. One of these. Still nothing. How about one of these? And then we'll come here. There we go. I have an opinion, I don't have the records, here it is. These two behemoths that own the unregulated market together and grew these incredible businesses in terms of growth were at war with each other. And one put the other out of business intentionally. Now, maybe there's nothing wrong with that, maybe there's nothing wrong with love and war, but Binance is a massive, unregulated, global monopoly now. 
they put FTX out of business. Why do you believe FTX failed? So he thinks that we put FTX out of business. Interesting theory. Can we prove this now? Do we believe him? I don't know. But I want to show you this because this is pretty funny. That's pretty funny, guys. All right, let's get to this. Check this out. So it would appear that Uphold only hold 8 million XRP left. I don't know if they get him or not, but I'm not risking it. So what he's doing, he's looking at the Uphold, the balance sheets. He's looking at a while. The while has about 8 million XRP left. What I am saying here is that, yes, this wallet does have 8 million XRP left. But what I am also saying is Uphold has more than one wallet, just like every other exchange out there. So... Is there more than 8 million extra P left than Uphold? Of course. But I want what I want you to think about is something we call the uh, the old shell shock factor. When all the exchanges do, is, it does start to get gobbled up, because at some point it's going to, what then is going to happen to the price of XRP? John Deaton chimes in. I just saw Kevin O'Leary's utter disgrace of an answer. Why FTX failed? He literally blamed the entire collapse on CZ Binance and does not once say SBF is a fraud. It's even blame him and he just got indicted of eight count and it's the biggest fraud since Madoff. An absolute clown. Of course, but he has to say this. He was paid 15 million to talk good about FTX. 15 million dollars to talk good. Why is he going to turn his back now? He's not. John's right though. This guy is the biggest fraud since Madoff. He deserves to be locked up. I am happy he is not going to see daylight until February 8th. He is in a disgusting prison that is overbooked, overcrowded. He's a vegan and he's crying already. Too bad. Too freaking bad. You knew what you did. You knew what you did months ago. No one should feel any remorse for you. I want to know where all that money went. Where did nine billion dollars go? All those mansions you have, and all these houses and penthouse suites that's I think I read totaled over a hundred million dollars. Those should all be forced to be liquidated, and that money should be used to go back to the people. No one that you know, relative family, should get that money. It is all illegally laundered money from your scheme. And I hope they don't have a vegan option in prison. I hope you're forced to eat ramen, Twinkies, bologna sandwiches, peanut butter. I hope you rot. And a lot of people hope you rot. Just in, PayPal is to integrate its crypto service with MetaMask, allowing users to choose their PayPal account as a payment method within the MetaMask wallet. You're probably saying to me right now, Rip, what does this do for us? XRP is not a MetaMask. It can't be a MetaMask. You're right. But what, you want to know what I am telling you? I'm telling you that they are working on a connection for XRP into MetaMask. They are working on a side chain that's coming out early next year, which would give us MetaMask integration, which would then bring PayPal into the picture. You see where this is going? PayPal, XRP, right down the road from each other, or Ripple, I should say. Big time, folks. Here's the actual article that came out this morning. PayPal working with crypto MetaMask wallet to offer an easy way to buy crypto. I'm not going to play it for you, but we're going to get to this. Brad Kimes is on with BitBoy talking XRP pre-allocation. And it is speculative, right? But it is like an ultimate goal kind of thing. And if you think about the, you know, the idea of bridge work, you know, or XRP working as a bridge currency in the respect that you just described, you know, like I said, if every country's holding a little bit of it or their central bank's already holding some of it, you know, this gets quite interesting too, because if you go into that uh, summary judgment, they have pre-allocated contracts, but we don't know exactly how many and to whom.
And there's lots of speculation about who those pre-allocated contracts of XRP could be too. And it gets quite interesting if we get clarity we're and then aliens? we find out what's that? Or some of these contracts are possibly aliens? <laughs> well, how about central banks? Oh, right? okay. Well, those are people. Okay. Yeah, th those are people too, but certainly aliens there for sure because they just look at us like cattle, right? But <laughs> you know, but the but you know, if if those things come to light and we learn those things, it makes so much sense how XRP could sit as a bridge currency yeah. and serve to unlock dormant dollars around the world, but never threaten any one country's money at the same time. Yeah, I think that's man, that's a fascinating argument. Um, I think ultimately it aligns with the you know, wholesale CBD narrative that I've been told uh, a long time ago, uh, where things are going, that I started kind of looking into XRP and giving it a fair shot. That was some stuff that came to me that was like, oh, that actually makes sense. But listen, pre-allocation, interesting. We know XRP is pre-allocated. The question is to who is this XRP pre-allocated? Where are these contracts? How much is going where? And it's very inter interesting that we heard before from Ripple, from Monica Long, that the Ripple was working with 40 to 50 central banks. Could this XRP be pre-allocated for these 50 central banks? We've only heard about two central banks thus far who are actually working upon the XRP ledger. Pre-allocation is a thing. It's going to happen. The question is how much XRP is going to be pre-allocated? But what Brad touches on here, and I've touched on this for quite some time, folks. When we look at the pre-allocation theory, and we look at central banks using and holding XRP, the whole premise of this is that the central banks can still control the money that is coming in and out of their countries, and it's not going to affect or change their monetary system. That is why not... Bitcoin failed and no one's going to move over to a Bitcoin narrative. The central banks still want to control what comes in. They still want to control the money in their country. And XRP does not pose a threat to that. Remember that. Because at the end of the day, when you are looking at a bridge currency that doesn't affect a country's ability to control what comes in and out, and doesn't affect their actual money, this is what we're talking about. Wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.